1688, Britain. Her father slain by cruel pirates, beauty Lone Stafford becomes a pirate herself at the behest of her father's hidden privateer mark that she is commanded to resume on his behalf, or find herself imprisoned by the British crown. In her quest to lure her father's killer to justice, Lone becomes stranded aboard the Slayer of the Dragon, a pirate ship captained by her father's worst adversary, Hunter Draven. She enlists Hunter's reluctant aid, desperate to unbury Jonathan Stafford's horrifying treachery and his killer, a quest that ferries her down a prickly path of destruction. Hunter Draylin fights a war against his lustful, seduced heart. If he falls for Lone, he risks, he risks betraying his own father's memory, for he knows Lone's father as the Red Raven, a brutal brigand who killed his father in a ruthless search for a shipwrecked treasure that no pirate possesses the exact crypt for. Torn by his starvation for blood vengeance he's never to receive, and hungry to possess Lone and keep her lying in his bed, Hunter questions her innocence of the Red Raven's tyranny. Is he a fool to trust her? Alas, his lust for Lone becomes too alluring for him to forsake. He cannot resist her. Lone battles bloodlusting pirates, swiping murderous swords, all while frenzied for Hunter's seductive caresses, a rakish rogue whose own past lies cloaked in mysterious shadow, a pirate she cannot refuse who holds the key to her desire's heart. Will she survive the betrayal forged by exposing the nefarious surrounding her? Nefariousness surrounding her? Or will devils reign divine and she'll never grasp her one and only chance to romance a pirate? All owing to the venomous curse that webs a lost treasure in a blood tinctured shroud of death. Oh, hello. I uh, didn't notice you there. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, and welcome once again to The Heir's Lair. I am your host, Jonathan Taylor. And before you ask it, no, no one's stolen my shirt. <laughs> I just happen to be wearing uh, this today. Because it uh, fits the opportunity to review a uh, pirate romance. Not just a pirate romance, but the debut book of the self-proclaimed pirate queen, Roman Romancing a Pirate by Rael Logan. Before I get into the actual uh, uh, content of the book, there are some uh, externalities I want to uh, uh, I want to discuss. And as usual, uh, I'll try to keep my review as uh, spoiler-free as possible. Uh, first off, I have to commend Royal on her absolutely brilliant synopsis. It somehow manages to spoil nothing and yet reveal everything. It is the best synopsis I ever think I've read. Uh, unfortunately, its uh, impact on the final rating will be quite minimal because it has to compensate for the kind of uh, lackluster title. Really, romancing a pirate could mean uh, anything. You could put it on any. You could really put it on any book of this uh, of this genre, and yeah, <laughs> you you wouldn't lose much. Um, the cover, also, I have to mention, is uh, <clears throat> is uh, is pretty good. It does have a it does have a good design and it does sell the uh, idea of mystery and adventure, but ultimately this book is relies on a little bit more than uh, mystery and uh, uh, and adventure, or at least its uh, narrative does. And I think this uh, cover is quite bad at really uh, uh, at really sharing that, regrettably. <clears throat> For those of you who want the uh, TLDW when it comes to the uh, content. Let me just say that uh, if uh, romances are your thing, then maybe give this book a go. It has a lot of uh, big personalities that clash in a, in a variety of ways. And if that sounds like the kind of thing that would uh, interest you and have no problem with the uh, with a more old-timey manner of speaking, then I think this book will be uh, right up your alley. When it comes to a more detailed review, um, I'll have to be very careful if I want to keep this uh, this review as spoiler free as possible because the plot uh, goes on a lot of twists and turns. There are uh, lots of elements that uh, uh, that uh, influence it and that change uh, all of the uh, existing dynamics. I will, however, applaud this book for managing to keep uh, the plot focused on the uh, 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 on the main couple as a romance really should. In case the um, in case the synopsis didn't give it away, the main couple consists of Lone, I hope that's how her name is pronounced, uh, Stafford, a wealthy young lady with ambitions of finding an uh, auspicious match, and uh, Hunter Draylin, um, 
who is a, uh, the captain of a pirate ship, who is trying to find a treasure his father died to uh, keep secluded. Um, when, uh, when her father dies, Lady Stafford finds out that the rumors of him being a privateer aren't just, uh, uh, aren't just rumors. And she has to, uh, and she has to, uh, you know, uh, pick up his mantle. As she is trying to wrap her head around, uh, around that, she encounters, uh, Hunter Draylin, and the two go down a long, winding, twisted path full of, uh, desire, longing, adventures, and, uh, secrets. All the while, various, uh, other characters in the book try to sow, uh, discord between them for a, uh, wide variety of reasons which I won't go into, you should read a book for yourself if you, want, if you're, if you really want to find them out. I have to commend, um, uh, I have to commend Royale on her, um, on her plotting. Because like I said, uh, there are lots of uh, twists and turns to the narrative, and I think all of the twists and turns are uh, introduced in a way that, uh, that is uh, uh, quote-unquote organic, and that makes sense uh, within the story. Also, all the developments that result from that are uh, well anchored in in the uh, established archetypes of these uh, uh, of these characters. Speaking of, uh, Rael's character work is overall pretty good uh, because she has a she has a clear grasp of uh, who the uh, what the archetypes of these characters are and in general what uh, uh, you know, what defines them and how they would react in uh, and how they would react in uh, uh, various circumstances. So and she's and also she is very much consistent when it comes to not just uh, establishing on uh, establishing on the, on uh, these archetypes, but also on following through with how they would uh, with how they would react. So so yeah, uh, good on her for that. My one criticism about her uh, character work, however, uh, is that uh, it some it sometimes comes comes across as uh, uh, comes across as shallow. Um, uh, I have to say now, after having uh, finished reading the book, I'm not exactly sure who uh, Lone and Hunter really were before they, uh, you know, before they actually uh, met each other. I don't really know if they have any other ambitions aside from uh, uh, being landed gentry or uh, finding or finding treasure. I don't exactly know what kind of uh, you know, what kind of education they've had or. But or not, there is uh, one thing in particular that really uh, that really stuck with them. Anything in particular that you could say they have um, uh, they have mastered or, or gained some level of uh, proficiency in. They do have they do have big personalities. And they do and they have well established uh, you know they're, they're well established uh, character and aura. But I don't see what that I know, but I don't really see what these uh, personalities are really uh, grounded in or what or what cause them to emerge and manifest in the, uh, uh, in the ways they do, uh, regrettably. <clears throat> then again, that is better than some, um, uh, than some other characters I could mention. Because all the characters, uh, aside from the main uh, power struggle of this book, with, who do indeed have, you know, these uh, large personalities and they're, and, uh, you know, they're a, a well-established character and a very clearly distinctive uh, aura to them, other characters receive uh, a name, a job, admittedly their own uh, distinctive voices, which is something you don't really find in uh, a lot of other books, but their roles in the uh, storylines otherwise are just as um, uh, are just as minions or support figures for the uh, you know for the uh, for the principal characters. Uh, one character in particular, Annie Leek, who is a uh, uh, who is a uh, uh, captain in the employ of uh, uh, formerly in the employ of Lone's father uh, suffers because of this uh, <laughs> uh, suffers because of this uh, uh, limited uh, characterization. Her sole role in in the narrative is just to be the cheerleader of the um, main romance, and because this book is so uh, character driven, the uh, um, the lack of a detailed characterization for a lot of uh, uh, for a lot of these characters ends up having uh, a domino effect on other aspects of the story as well. The um, the romantic plot in the book, i.e., the main plot of the book, comes across as uh, comes across as very uh, uh, superficial, and it makes the story uh, seem very melodramatic. There, the relationship between Lone and Hunter seems to be driven more by 
uh, ego, regret and happenstance rather than a concerted uh, desire and effort for them to uh, stay together. They don't really work for their uh, relationship, they just uh, tumble into it because the plot brings them to, uh, uh, brings them to that point. I've spoken a bit with uh, Rael and supposedly they are just so attracted to each other that they cannot help themselves. And all I can say is that is not really, uh, that is not really uh, uh, a compelling, a compelling story. Or at least it is not a story I personally would uh, uh, would find compelling. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that also affects the plot uh, to some extent. I have to say, while I did com while I did uh, commend the plot a little bit earlier, there are some uh, small inconsistencies. Some of those uh, inconsistencies can be explained by the fact that uh, other characters are hypocritical or incompetent, but others, mm, not really. They're not. They don't really. Uh, they're not really a problem for the book, but they they're just kind of. Uh, I, they're just kind of stuck in my head as uh, as uh, issues that the uh, that the plot actually has. However, they're not the that the book that the book has. They're not the biggest issue the book uh, has, though. That would be the uh, uh, that would be the world building. Uh, from the beginning, it's established that Lone has to uh, figure out what it means to become a uh, privateer in order in order for her to be able to uh, take over her uh, you know her father's uh, privateering company. So I think that would means that would mean that she has to learn how to uh, you know, what, what it's like to control the uh, operations of such an endeavor or what it makes to be able to uh, sail a ship. And unfortunately I think she knows uh, about as much about that in the, uh, in the end of the story as she knew uh, in the beginning. Uh, she does some, uh, she does some uh, kitchen duty and is involved a little bit in uh, navigation at certain points. But otherwise, that the topic of uh, exploring how um, you know how piracy or how uh, privateering works is a woefully underdeveloped concept. Uh, thankfully, the book makes up um, in some part uh, in some part for this uh, 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 for this uh, lack of information by, as I think the synopsis already gave away, uh, employing the. Uh, uh, employing the manner of speaking that was uh, a contemporary to the uh, 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 to the characters, that it does take a while to get uh, to get used to, but it ends up being uh, ends up being uh, quite immersive, and also throughout the book it becomes uh, it becomes quite a bit more entertaining, even if some of the ways that in which uh, some words are used uh, is somewhat inconsistent. Overall, though. Um, uh, uh, while I while I think the story itself is kind of hollow, I think the I think it actually has a, a good uh, a good solid core that uh, Royal was capable of uh, of building, and that core still remains and that core still remains uh, strong and interesting, even if the uh, I even if the items uh, surrounding it don't really have uh, don't really have that good of a foundation. My final rating for Romancing a Pirate is a uh, is a three out of five. And yeah, that was uh, that was my review. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if uh, if you enjoyed it, then please uh, leave a like, uh, and also share this video wherever you think other people will uh, like it as well. If you have anything you'd like to add to my review, the comment section awaits your input. And if you want to see when my uh, next video comes up, well then uh, please subscribe. Ideally, also ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will ask of you in order to keep you notified. My own debut, Heir to the Empire Next Generation, is available under a master link in the uh, description down below. Until next time, I am Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair.